I think that systemic failure at all levels um, resulted in what happened to my son. My name is Tracy Porteous, and I'm the Executive Director of the Ending Violence Association of BC. My name is Carol Didelli, and I'm uh, the mother of Tim McLean, who is the 22-year-old young man that was murdered on the Greyhound bus in 2008. I think far too many Canadians have no idea the extent of the devastating loss that people who have been victimized go through in the aftermath of experiencing violent crime. To go into the ju justice system and have them tell me that it's now an, an NCR matter. When it becomes an NCR matter, it's out of the justice system. It is put into the healthcare system. Last month, I sat at a meeting with the federal justice minister and other heads of organizations within the justice system and um, heard very clearly that there is a critical shortage of mental health care providers in Canada then how am I supposed to have any kind of confidence? Mentally ill killers need to be held in a facility, equipped and prepared to house them and treat them. There is a very long and rich body of research that says that coordinated responses save lives. People coordinating their services and their responses increase victim safety. Um, and increase offender accountability. You know, coordination is not the easiest thing and hasn't historically been the easiest thing. And I think most Canadians wouldn't realize this, but in the, in the 1980s and early 90s, every province and territory in Canada brought forward information or, uh, legislation uh, to protect the privacy of Canadians. And rightly so. They didn't, people didn't want one government agency sharing their information needlessly with an another government agency. But what that resulted in was people n not sharing information for the benefit of somebody. And so what we're seeing in our province, and I know in Ontario as well, and other provinces are following, is that um, there's other legislation that is being developed to supersede those pieces of uh, legislation to allow information to be shared um, when there's a risk. So basically, the motto that we're following is life trumps privacy. So we agree that privacy is first and foremost across the board when people are seeking government services. But if somebody's disclosing that their life is at risk, you know, we would hope that information is going to be shared with whoever it needs to be shared with in order to save her life. Mental health diagnosis in one province does not follow you the moment you cross a border. It should be nationally, it should be a federal issue. But because it falls into the healthcare system and healthcare is different in each province, it's, it's handled that way. Now he's allowed to go into Winnipeg and into some surrounding uh, townships. I could potentially go down to my beach and run smack into him at any given time. Um, I think that's wrong. If I say nothing and do nothing, nothing will change. Clearly it won't, because obviously that's what's happened in the past. So these cases have been happening for a long time. We just, I mean, I didn't know what NCR was when this happened. I'd never heard of it before. Absolutely nobody that I've talked to in the public has any idea what NCR is. Had never heard of it. They honestly believe that that Canada still has the guilty by reason of insanity and that these people are put away and never heard from again. That is what the, the Canadian public believes for the most part. And that is so not the case. I think you can sympathize and you can empathize, but until you've lived it and walked it, you really truly cannot understand it.